uh, let's start off. We have maybe an hour. So uh, let's start off. Uh, we'd like to have Wendisco come up, start off, and we will start off with your five-minute session. Yes, stop. Yes. Here is a microphone for you to use. Okay. One, two. Oh, it works. Ready? Okay, sure. Set. Go. Hey, guys. Thanks a lot for coming up. And uh, this is actually a great chance to, you know, be in front of a bunch of the Apache folks. And uh, um, I want to talk about the uh, arguably the sexiest project in Apache ecosystem, honestly. It's called Big Top. And the reason it's actually the sexiest one is because we helping to hide the complexity of building software stacks. One of the most complex ever software stacks I've seen in my life, 20 plus years actually of development, is a Hadoop ecosystem, right? So it's uh, 23 projects, small and big ones. Um, the, the interconnection of these goddamn components actually is so tight and bad that, you know, if you're sane and trying to build it, you know, just one by one, you're probably going to be cuckoo, you know, in about, I don't know, 30 minutes or something. At any rate, so what we do is we let you to define your BOM file, build of materials, that will say, okay, so here's my version of Hadoop, here's my version of HBase, here's my version of this and that. And then we pull together a bunch of official Apache releases. Thanks God, they're all there, you know, tarballs and MD5 sound and that kind of stuff. And then run the build process that, you know, contained within this tarball, uh, tarball file. Uh, and producted binaries, uh, produced binaries would be actually packaged into standard Linux forms. And then you got yourself a neatly packaged repository that being installed actually guaranteed to work, right? Out of the box. I actually, I don't know how many of you were listening to my talk yesterday about the big top. Um, five people, seven, maybe. You should have all been there, actually. So <clears throat> it's awesome. Actually, I deployed in front of the, you know, amazed public. I, I deployed the Hadoop cluster with Spark on it and, and, and ran some crap on it. So it worked, right? So like that. So um, if, if any of you are not, you know, contributors to Big Top yet, shame on you. Come and join us, okay? Dev at BigTopApache.org, right? The usual place to start. And we have a great crowd of people, actually, and um, we do this awesomely. Um, a little bit off topic of Big Top, I wanted to actually talk about the, the other project. I'm actually covering two here, Jim. Whoa, okay. <clears throat> So uh, we're doing an interesting project in HBase right now that is changing the way how people perceive the uh, high availability and continuous availability. And uh, if any of you actually are interested in high availability approach, you should actually come and check HBase 10.8.6.6. That's, that's where it all starts. And what we essentially do, the, the simplicity of this idea will, will amaze any one of you, I guarantee. So if someone is not amazed, I'll buy you a beer right there. So... <clears throat> The idea is, what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the idea is very simple. So most of the high availability solutions are usually doing this. We build a very complex system of, you know, meshes, sticks, and bubble gum. And then when something happens, we're trying to recover with it, okay? And as you all know, when you seek, you know, the visit to the doctor is actually highly, uh, highly costly and, and painful and that kind of stuff. Instead, if you walk in the sunlight, you know, every single day a little bit, it's pleasant, it's easy, it's cheap, and you stay healthy, okay? So basically what I'm trying to say, instead of trying to fix a screw up, you'd rather not let screw up to happen. And how we do this, we run this overly complex Paxos coordination algorithm that lets you to find out if a particular transaction in any system, HDFS, HBase, you name it, can go through. If it can go through for whatever reason, it just won't happen. Everyone amazed, no? Here we go. I thought actually we, you, you will use the advantage to, to get a free beer, but okay, anyway. So, and uh, one of the most complex systems that we're actually doing right now is HBase. Um, it's, it's a huge challenge, actually, because uh, so far, the only more or less distributed coordination system in Apache Foundation was Zookeeper, which is not, unfortunately, a coordination engine at all to start with. But HBase actually has very intricate, intimate relationship, I would call it, with Zookeeper. So in order to actually make it work, we're trying to separate Zookeeper first. And if, if any people here 
are interested in making transactions like HBase and making HBase that is actually highly robust and can work in any conditions, please come and join us. Again, HBase 10866. It would be great to have you. And I am done. Thank you, Constantine. I'm doing the Wayne Disco. Woo! Okay, I, come, give me a break. Okay. <laughs> okay, that was uh, our very, very first session. Uh, who should be our next victim? Uh, uh, next contestant will be Jason Hibbets. Jason. On crowdfunding. Ooh, this might be good. It might. I don't know. He's, he, His look how well he's, 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 he's jumping up here. Look at this, how happy he is. Look at that. Ooh, cool shades. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> so, the mic is yours. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Um, let's see where do I want to start. December 2012, I uh, woke up with this crazy notion that I was going to write a book. I don't know why I had this thought in my head, but uh, I basically I woke up one Saturday morning, I grabbed my notebook, and I started, I wrote down a couple title options, and I wrote down an entire outline uh, for this book that I wanted to write. I'd actually been writing it for a couple, uh, couple months already. I just didn't know it. So um, I went through. It took me about three to four weeks to get the first draft done. Um, I spent the next probably two months in the editing process. So if you ever want to write a book, you're going to spend a lot more time editing than you can think and that you can imagine. Um, but I, I'm in marketing. And I'm not in sales, so I'm not a really good sales guy, so I'm not going to do a good job of selling my book today, because that's not what I'm here for. Uh, but what, what I decided to do to market my book was to do a crowdfunding campaign. So maybe by show of hands, how many folks have, have given to a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo or anything like that? Okay, almost everyone in the room. Um, how many have gave to the Ubuntu uh, Kickstarter campaign? All right, just curious. Uh, has anyone run a crowdfunding campaign? Has anyone actually won? So a couple, one or two hands in here. Um, I'd never done one before, and so uh, since I've run a successful campaign, I thought I'd share a few tips with you today on, uh, in case you ever decide to do that. Um, I use Indiegogo. Uh, it's a crowdfunding platform. I think it's a little bit more kind of true to the open source roots. Uh, kind of got its start in the um, kind of the indie movies, um, but there's a lot of crafts, a lot of books on there. They don't have a lot of the restrictions that Kickstarter has. They actually offer two different options. You can do um, you can do a campaign and get fully funded. Um, you can they only charge you four percent. If you do the option to do a campaign and you don't quite meet your goal, they'll charge you 9%. So you still get to keep the money that you raise. I spent a lot of time researching other um, successful campaigns. Uh, I'm starting to see a lot more now. Now um, open source projects do crowdfunding. And some of the times they're asking for a lot of, of money. And so you should really just kind of think about what's a realistic financial goal that you can achieve. For me, I said, I think I can raise $3,000. Um, so my initial goals were that was that financial amount, and also to have a hundred different funders. Um, and as I, as you've done, as you've seen with crowdfunding campaigns, you get different perks. So with the perks, um, I looked at all these what other what everyone else was giving. Right, give me a dollar, you're going to get your name in the book. Uh, give me five bucks, I'll I'll mail you a sticker, and you get your name in the book. And I started building these perks out. Uh, one of my most popular perks was an invitation to the book release party. And uh, it was 50 bucks, and I thought at first, I'm like, oh, I'll just give out 10 invitations to that. And almost within like the first week, I had to extend it to 15, and I extended it to 20, and I actually extended it to 50, um, because that's what everybody wanted. And, and so in looking back and understanding, like, why was this happening? Why was everyone like chipping in 50 bucks, right? When they could just get the book for 20, sign copy of the book, I'd mail it to them, they'd be happy. Um, what I found out, two things uh, for my theory here is that $50 is the amount of money, psychologically, that you can donate to a campaign or kind of frivolously spend that you do not have to consult your significant other, <laughs> right? You wanna go get that, 90, that new $90 phone? You better be, hey honey, I'm gonna go get this new phone, right? Um, so that was one thing. The other thing that I discovered is that people actually wanted to kind of hang out with other people that were donating to the campaign, uh, and, and so it was more of a social component, right? So kind of like kind of why we're here at Apache Con, right? so there's a social component to it. So. Um, that was my most popular perk. Um, the results of my campaign, I, had, I raised over $4,000. Uh, I had pre-sold 146 copies of the book. And, um, and then you've got to think about procurement, right? I spent three weekends stuffing book, signing books, stuffing them in envelopes, going to the post office. 
I'm sure the first day I went to the post office uh, and I had 75 books and like three international uh, things to send out, the guy was not very happy with me. Uh, but I was stoked. <laughs> um, anyway, um, kind of the key takeaways here are if you're going to do a crowdfunding campaign, look at what other people are doing. See what's successful. See what perks people are into. Um, and see what's failing, right? See that, go look at that one that's failing and, like, and think, kind of think to yourself, why aren't people giving to this campaign? Um, you definitely want to have an inner circle of people. You want to have some folks that are going to help you spread the word. Um, I had a whole strategy around doing guest blogging where I would do a guest blog for, um, like I did a guest blog for the Sunlight Foundation. I did a guest blog for GovFresh. So I was kind of spreading out my word in different areas of the country. And, uh, and overall, um, I thought it was pretty successful. So if you'd like to talk about that, I'd be happy to do it um, in 18 seconds. Oh, great question. It's the foundation for an open source city, and I'll talk about it in the keynote tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Hope to see you there. When is coming out? I'm done. Two more. Uh, I'm good. When is it coming out? It's out. It's, oh, yeah. Yes. Do you have an inspection? Yeah. All right. All right. So, how are we enjoying it so far? I can see some of the beer has been imbibed I now. think so, I yes. think so. All right, next up, next victim is Andrew Grieve from Cordova. Andrew. Andrew. Okay, going once, going twice. Ooh, okay. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Do we have next victim, Chiradeep Vital, to talk about network virtualization. Chiradeep, are you here somewhere? Ooh, people Ooh, are backing out. Oh, this is not good. No. All right. Well, somebody I know is here. All right. Shane. Shane. Bring it on up. Okay. Come on, Shane. Come on. Give it up for Shane. And I have to be misreading this. It's what I don't love about the ASF. Impossible. Better not take five minutes. Uh, yeah, it, it won't take five minutes. Actually, ready? it will. I'm going to use every second I have. Yes, go, ahead. go. So for those of you who don't, who, who've shown up at ApacheCon and say less than the past five years, my name is Shane Kirkaroo, and I'm a uh, lightning talk um, addict. So I've given a lightning talk at almost every ApacheCon I've been to that we've had them, and they've all been on the same theme, why I love the ASF. So I gave a couple of those, and then I realized that was boring doing it again. So I gave a variety of wh why I love the ASF. So I gave internationally alphabetical talks about why I love the ASF. For those geeks of you out there, alphabetical means collated. Uh, I've also given talks about nakedly statistically why I love the ASF. And no, you don't want to see that. Uh, but I've talked about so much why I love the ASF and the community and the people and all of you. This is so great to see you guys. Um, I thought it was time to change it up a little bit. So I'd like to talk tonight about what I don't love about the ASF. So there are a few things out there. We all have our pet peeves. We all have our questions about different things. So before I go on to that, I need to do another tradition. So we need to define what is this thing that is the ASF or the Apache Software Foundation. It's really a foundation. It's the ASF. It's this thing. It's also all these projects. And that's probably what most of you find important, one, two, three, four. 10 or 12. If you're in more than 12 projects, we have a session for you that you can join, you know, a little 12 step session for getting better. But we have a lot of projects, and I'd like to mix up our projects. So these are all Apache Software Foundation projects Zookeeper, XML Beans, XML Graphics, Xerces, Zalin, Wiki, Wink, Wicket, Whir, Web Services, Velocity, VCL, UEMA, Tuscany, Turbine, Traffic Server, Tommy, Tomcat, Tiles, Ticket, Thrift, Tickle, Tapestry, Syncope, Synapse. Subversion, Struts, Steve. There is an Apache Steve project. Go look it up. Standball, Scoop, Spark, Spam Assassin, Slingsys, Shiro, Shindig, Service Mix, Santuario, Roller, River, Rave, Cupid, Portals, Poi, Pivot, Pig, Pearl, PDF Box. Open Web Beans, Open Office, Open NLP, Open Meetings, Open JPA, Open Climate Workbench, Open Subversion, Open Git. Op oh, sorry, no, that was the joke. Uh, Uzi, Odu, ODT, Onami, Oltu, Olingo, all the funny names that go together, OFBiz, ODE, like I said, Notch, my face is, thank you, MR Unit, we have a testing project, can you believe that? Mina, Misos, Maven, Marmota, Mar Manifold, CF, Ma 
Mahout, Lucy, Lucene.net, Lucene, uh, you know, well, why can't they just stay the same, but who knows. Logging, LibCloud, Lenya, Knox, Carafe, Kafka, love Kafka. <laughs> Judy, JSP Wiki, JMeter, Gina, J JClouds, James, Jackrabbit, Isis, HTTP Server, HTTP Components, HTTP Hive, HTTP Helix, HTTP HBase, HTTP Hama, I'm not getting the rhythm, am I? No, oh, sorry. Um, Hadoop, this is the Hadoop elephant, available soon, I hope. Gump, Gora, Giraffe, Geronimo, Forest, Flume, Flex, Felix, Etch, Empire DB, Directory, Direct Memory, Delta Spike, Delta Cloud, DB, CXF, Curator, CTX, Crunch, Creator, CouchDB, Cordova, yes, I will stop soon, I promise. Continuum, Commons, Cocoon, CloudStack, Click, Clareza, Chukwa, Chemistry, Cayenne, spicy. Cassandra, Camel, Bival, Builder, Bloodhound, sexy Big Top. Did you know that that man has a Apache Big Top hat? Good stuff. Axis, Avro, Ares, Arkiva, APR, NE23, which I still don't really get. Ant, Ambari, Ant is still crawling along, if you can believe that. Ambari, Allura, Arivada, ActiveMQ, Ace, Accumulo, Abdera, and we still don't have a project that starts with Y. And we don't have an incubator podling as of the last time I checked about an hour ago that starts with Y. So I am still disappointed we do not have a Y yet. But this talk is really about what I don't love about the ASF. The incubator website. I think we can all agree on that one. The Apache.org website. It's something I love, but it's something, it's like your childhood blankie. It's really not something that should be seen in public anymore. The projects at Apache.org website. Yes, it's an XML. I grew up with XML. It sucks. The fact that we don't have a project that starts with the letter Y. The trademark symbol. Yes, I don't know if anybody else out there has dreams and nightmares about the little TM and the R. I do. The last 10 seconds of any lightning talk. Sorry, I just don't love those. And what I really don't love is the end of ApacheCon, because while I love my family, and they're the most important thing in the world to me, that means I have to leave my larger family and go home. Thank you. Thank you, Shane. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to do something a little different, I think, right now. Um, you know, one of the basic ideas about Apache is this whole idea about uh, community over code, but I don't think we all know each other. So what we will do is we will pass this microphone around. We will take five minutes, and I want you to say your name and pass it to your neighbor, and we'll see how many people we can go through in the five minutes. Are you ready? Ready? Go. Subin. Vincent. Kurosh. Troy. Rich. Roger. Richard Stallman. Rich. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right here, and then I will give it to you as you pass it down. Okay, I'm uh, Jack. Rob. Andrew. Jason. Jachen. Ian. Stacy. James. Greg. Micah. Dave. Yannick. Suresh. Daniel. Apache Steve. <laughs> Matt. Jason. Kanak. Nicholas. Aaron. Casey. Dan. Brad. Wukas. Chris. Art. Ryan. John. Scott. Ted. Nick. Tim. <laughs> Why <are> you me? <laughs> Snoop Dave. <laughs> Oli. Chip. Go. You go. Eric Raymond. I am. <laughs> Harm. Lou. Doug. Emmanuel. Mike. Eric. Donovan. Ingo. Marcel. Jan Willem. Carsten. Lucas. Rob. Johnny. Serge. Uh, oh. Oh. Eric. Stefan. <laughs> ben. <laughs> Falco. Michael. Mm -hmm. Mike. Chris. Alan. Jadip. Amri Shuri. Shweta. Mitten. Sushant. Tim. Nick. 
Phil. Dave. Kanye West. <laughs> Dimitri. Michael. Mark. Jeff. Nikhil. Anu. Uri. <laughs> Rob. Daniel, and why don't anybody tell us what projects you're with, too? Samuel. Okay, start on Jim. all over again. Dan, Rave. Andrew. Brian. Mark. Phil. Alan. Wayne. Dave. Artyom. Maxim. Rado. Don. Venkat. Remender. Bean. Lisa. Ed. Rodrigo. Chris. Dave. Chris. Right. Melissa. Right. You guys need to go, right? Brent. Bob. Joe. Jeff. Chandra. <laughs> Yao Fen. You guys have not gone yet, right? Okay. Boris. <laughs> Justin. Run! Run. Gage. Kyohei. Oh, Unsan. Jeffrey. Steve. Levin. Gagan. Bhargav. Oh, Reito. Mitchell. Yen. Jesse. Mandeep. Hey, how's it going? My name is Doug. <laughs> Creamy goodness. <laughs> Fuck cutting Lushing guy. Sinso. And we forgot a group real quick. <laughs> Arthur. Brane. Robin. Les. Garkam. Cordova Andrew. Sean. Dan. Marcel. Benjamin. Steve. Solar Yannick. Jim. Joe. The and rest of y'all are. To spare. 30 seconds to spare. Oh, no. I have never seen a group of people so tentative about their first name in my life. <laughs> Steve, I think. All right. It's the pressure of having that microphone in front of them. It's like, ah. Uh... Okay. You have the list, but uh, oh. we have a couple napkins up here. Okay. If we're judging you by handwriting, your elementary school teachers are going to be very, very sad. Shall we go? With, oh, yeah, no, yeah, we've done yeah, that one. Yeah. All right, so that napkin's done. This is Bears of the World? Beer. Oh, Beers, beers around, the around the World. Okay. Okay. Those are two totally okay. different. Okay, so uh, Rich is going to talk about Beers Around... Beers Around the World. In a world. Ready? Yeah. Go. Oh, I have a microphone. Ah. Right there. So, uh, as you know, one of the official, one of the unofficial uh, sayings of the Apache Software Foundation is we've always done it that way. And, uh, not even a little laugh? Okay. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that we've always done in addition to the lightning talks is that Greg Stein gets up here and does a lightning talk very frequently. And uh, I noticed that many of you hadn't been to a lightning talk and so you'd missed this and Greg is not here. So, um, what I'd like for you to do is for those of you who have shared a beverage with me in some remote corner of the world, stand up and tell everyone where that was. Edinburgh. Too many to count. <laughs> uh, Lewis, we, we had drinks in, in Moscow a few years ago. You remember that? Yeah. Is that really everyone? Surely it can't be. <laughs> so, uh, when Greg does that, it takes a lot longer. <laughs> but uh, the point that Greg is trying to make is that, uh, as Jim said in his keynote this morning, social coding is about this. It's about gathering together and meeting people. And uh, 
I, I've noticed that when people get involved in open source for the first time and they're participating on mailing lists, they, uh, they're not the nicest people, but once they have come to a conference and met the people that they've badmouthed on mailing lists, they tend to be a lot kinder to one another. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, Greg would have consumed the entire five minutes with people saying where they'd had drinks with him, but uh, apparently you all need to uh, come to the same conference as I go to more often. Were there any Sri Lankas out there? I'm pretty sure that I had drinks with some of you in Sri Lanka. Um, Anyway, I guess that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you, Rich. Uh, one of the uh, conditions that we usually have um, for the lightning talks is that there's the, uh, the no slides rule. Um, every once in a while, uh, a uh, talk submission is worthwhile enough that we actually do away with that rule for a little bit. So um, we've got, let me pull this up right here. We actually have, um, has anybody ever heard about something called open office before? <laughs> no, no, well, I think there's gonna be a, a, a short, uh, how would you describe it? How would you describe the, uh, the event you're about to do? Hmm? It's called open office by the numbers. So we will, come on up. Wow, two people too. This is violating all kinds of rules. In which one? Fact, it's Lessons? No, no, no. That's right. That's a PDF. Wait, you're doing a talk on open office with a PDF? <laughs> it, can get, it gets even worse. The other one, the other one. Okay. I think we're using PowerPoint. No, we're not. It's worth yeah, mentioning that you know Andrew here is from Oracle. I'm from IBM. We're the, no, 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 the most loved names in open office. Just, just, this yeah. thing goes full screen. Like uh, uh, Control L. What? No. no. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's how you handle Microsoft Office. Now we have no timer though, so hold on. Okay. We've got to make at least this much official. Right. Yeah. So I will start the countdown if you get to uh, 10. Go. OK, so this is, this is Apache Open Office by the numbers. So you're on. Go for it. 100 million. OK, 100 million. That's the total number of downloads of Apache Open Office. 313 is the number of downloads in that 100 uh, million that uh, went to the Vatican. Thank you, Francis. Um, three is the total number of downloads from Antarctica. Yeah. North Korea. <laughs> the size in megabytes of a single download of Apache Open Office. And that's the approximate number of petabytes of uh, download uh, bits that have gone since we've been at Apache. Luckily, they did not go through Apache's infrastructure. They all went to SourceForge. 12,000, the driving distance in kilometers from Lisbon to Bangalore, if you've ever done that, I'm sure we all have. It's also, yeah. Interestingly enough, it's also? It's also how far 100 million CDs would fit if they were put end to end. Yeah, so sideways. Um, interestingly, uh, that is the uh, height in kilometers if you stack them flat, which also the height in kilometers, that's the uh, edge of space. Um, and, yeah, it was done on a modern Pentium, so we know it was yes, correct. Yeah. Okay, 6.4 billion, that's the cost of 100 million subscription licenses. For a year. For a year, for some unnamed uh, commercial software vendor's home premium subscription to their <laughs> office productivity suite. 6.4 billion, I'll note that that's $100 million more than the annual revenue of Starwood Hotels and Resorts, who own this hotel. Okay. Um, that's the uh, number of downloads we have on our current beta. And that's the number of beta downloads from Italy, with the top country for the downloads. And that is the number of public announcements we had that the beta was available. <laughs> 11 million total lines of code in Apache OpenOffice. And 
that's the estimated number of years that it would take to, uh, to write the code according to the uh, Kokomo model. That's unfortunately the number of people who actually understand our build system. <laughs> okay, they're, they're uh, 1.6 million. That's the uh, page views per month on, uh, on our forum. And what website? What's that? Is that the full no, website? No, that's the forum. That's the forum, wow. That must be the number of posts of user support questions on our forum each month. And that is the number of users on the forum. That's posts per week on the forum. And that's the number of posts in the forum referencing cats. <laughs> 250,000 hits per day to our wiki. And that's the number of uh, wiki uh, posts that reference our uh, Klingon translation. Seriously, seriously. Yeah. Um, 135 committers in the project. And let's see, we have uh, 484 subscribers to our dev list. 17,500 total messages to the dev list since we came to Apache. We, we, we drive a little uh, traffic. Uh, have you read it all, Tim? Or a good portion, yes. 109, the most messages to the dev list in a single day. <laughs> Moi? Yeah, that day, yes. Uh, zero to the power of zero. Um, it's one zero or undefined. This is actually We're the question. Sure. Yes. It's actually produced the most con contentious bike shedding discussion on the list to date, what the value was, invoking uh, quotations from Leonard Euler, Friedrich Grau Gauss, and um, references to the IEEE floating point specification. It almost tore apart the uh, PMC, as well, I should say, when we were doing the ODF specification, almost tore apart um, the standards process, we still don't know what that means. <laughs> yes, everyone has an opinion. Yeah. Okay, that is the number of builds to date on our uh, Windows, Windows build bot. The number of successful builds on FreeBSD. <laughs> That's the uh, number of build bots that are now actually building our official snapshots. Total number of builds on, on the Mac build bot. And that's the number of days we've been waiting to get a Mac build bot. <laughs> okay. 91,000 strings in our user interface that we translate in Poodle. And 440, oh, 440,000 strings. Seven, six, 170 translators. Five, 34 four, languages. Three, 110 two, years five, to translate. Oh, yeah. oh. Oh. Oh, no, he's going to cheat. Uh-oh. That one. Uh-huh. Number of Roman Polanski films that appear, Apache Open Office uh, shows up in. <laughs> All right. Okay, thank you. We better get a move on. We're running out of time. Ooh, we really are. All Goodness right. Gracious. Next up, we have another napkin. Aaron Boyd from Ambari wants to talk about where are the chicks. Really? Where are the chicks, man? Maybe Erin will tell us. I don't know. So I have two things. Go. How many women are there out there? Stand up. Did you guys have a slide on that? How many are in the ASF? Like four of us? It's not enough. Don't you guys have sisters and daughters and cousins and grandmothers that want to join the open source re revolution? So that's the first thing, is there are not enough of us. So you should give all these ladies here a hand for being here today. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to talk about was Apache Ambari. We had a, a brief presentation, a feather talk, earlier this week about it, and no one has heard about Apache Ambari. Well, Constantine claims that Big Top is the sexiest uh, project. But uh, dare I say that uh, the visual is really with Apache Umbari. Um, if, it's, if it's hard to take all the packages together to get Hadoop running, it's even harder to find an integrated management console to get it running. And that's what Apache Umbari completely open source provides. And we need more committers. We need more people who are passionate about the Hadoop ecosystem to be contributing to this project to make it better. Um, to provide great job analytics and to provide new services within the ecosystem. So 
Um, I encourage everyone, after this talk, first thing they do is run off and, and pull up Apache and Bari on their laptops and check it out. So that's all. Your website Use of time. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so we have gone through these. We have uh, Jan Willem Janssen. Um, Jan? Yeah. He will, uh, are you still going to do the two year committer yeah. thing? Okay. Um, Jan has been a committer for two years, and he will talk about the trials, the tribulations, the fun, the love the worldwide acclaim that has been his to enjoy and share, so. Yeah. Okay, so I've been a committer for uh, Apache Foundation for almost two years. Uh, I started out just by providing small patches to uh, Apache Wicket. And then when I got working with my current employer, I was providing patches to Apache Ace on a daily basis. And my boss, my current boss, get so tired of it that he actually voted me in to become a full-time committer on that project. So it all started from that. And um, well, after that, you start looking at more and more projects. And well, you first think, may I actually touch that code? And well, actually, you should touch that code. You should provide any patch that you're willing to provide. And of course, sometimes things go wrong. I wanted to contrib contribute a large patch to Apache Felix, a complete module of the user admin implementation. And I was so enthusiastic working on that, that while the vote was still running on the code that I wanted to contribute, I accidentally overrode it in, Gen in, uh, in Jira and deleted the actual artifact. So the vote had to be canceled and restarted. And I thought, oh God, I'm never going to become a full-time committer on Apache Felix. But hey, never, nobody complained. And I still got a successful vote after that. And well, things started rolling pretty fast after that. First, I was invited to become a PMC member on Apache Ace, which is on paper more daunting than in practice because, yeah, you have to deal with all kinds of project level stuff, but most of the times it's just voting on new committers or voting on the monthly announcements for the board and that kind of stuff. And, well, then I also want, maybe I can co become a PMC member for Apache Felix as well. And while thinking that, I got an invitation, very strange. So here am I today, my first Apache Con. I've given a talk today, my first talk on a large conference. And well, in the end, it's all about really friendly people. Everybody I meet here is very friendly and very kind. And that's also what you see on the mailing list of Apache. So I think it's really true that what everybody already is mentioning, that Apache is about social coding. That's true. And I can say it's been a wonderful two years, and I think I will start contributing to more. <laughs> That's not my fault, is it? <laughs> I think I, sh I should patch this, yeah. So in the end, I just wanted to say that it's been a wonderful two years, and I think I will contribute for a lot of more years. So thank you. We got another napkin Oops. while we were uh, doing this talk. Oh my God. Anybody want to go and debug this right now? Should we take, no, forget it. Of course not. Okay. We got another, another napkin? Another napkin. Goodness gracious. Shane, you really have started a precedent. We, it's not a precedent. You need to be slapped. You need to be slapped. Once again, thank you to Wine Disco for, uh, for sponsoring it. Uh, as far as I know, there is still quite a bit of beer out there. There's nothing more sad than either an unclosed Jira ticket or an unopened beer. So, unless it's a Bud partake. Light, partake. Yes. 
Uh, is, is Nick around? Nick? Oh, okay, okay. Um, remember how before I mentioned that there was um, a, uh, uh, a caveat about the no slides uh, rule? Well, this is kind of uh, special because it has to do with what, dare I say, a prank that the ASF pulled <laughs> on April Fool's Day. And, and Nick is going to actually walk us through everything that happened. So let me pull this up for you. How to use and abuse social media in one easy step. Right. <laughs> okay, so, Nick, Nick, the floor is yours. He will be having some helpful people here. Hi, so, I'm Shane. Helpful person. Hi. So, April the 1st, everyone know what happens in general on April the 1st? Okay, everyone know what we did this year? We, um, well, it wasn't me personally, but there was this wonderful little joke about the fact that Apache Subversion was going to switch to Git. And this seemed to go rather wide across the internet. And it seemed to catch out an awful lot of people, including, it must be said, some board members. And so what... Not, not me, but yes. <laughs> people in this room. So we've pulled together a few tweets, and we're going to see what they say about the ASF and how everyone sees the ASF. So Apache is moving the Subversion source base to Git, i.e. the source code of Subversion to Git. As you can imagine, not everybody is happy. Now this is, I don't know who this person is, so it's obviously somebody who saw the Jira Q or something and said, hey, what the heck? So great first place for the April Fool's thing to start, certainly. Okay, this is a pretty darn good April Fool's joke. Assuming you don't know, care, what subversion and Git are. Now, no, this, now I, don't, I disagree with Nick. This was sent on April 2nd. So this was in reaction to realizing when we announced, yes, that really was April really Fool's. Not everyone was really a fan of the whole thing, as we can see. Um, some people got a little scared by the whole idea. Yeah. So, so this is an example of somebody who uh, followed the, the issue. So a tiny little bit of backstory. I saw a couple things. I looked at the GRQ. I followed the link from the GRQ. Oh, sorry. I, I saw the, the Jira. I followed the link where indeed there was a Git repository that actually had the subversion code in it with the history. So my first thought was, hmm, I looked at the private subversion archives where Greg Stein a week ago had sent an email saying, hey, let's prank people, let's do it right. So that's the backstory. There was a JIRA queue. It was updated during the day, and many people commented on it. So bringing this up to board level, so people were assuming that, that management, the board, was overriding a project decision. So everybody's like, oh my god, this is, you know, that's totally not community and totally not getting it, which is not getting the point, but I suppose is getting the, the April Fool's joke, certainly. So the, the thing that was being brought up at the board level, for the, those of you who didn't follow the JIRA in detail, was it had been apparently conducted on a private thread, a private vote for this move. And then I believe it was Ross, was it, or was it Jim? Jim, Jim yep. said, you can't make a decision of that magnitude in private. So uh, Michael is, is a member of the Subversion PMC and obviously was in on this. But uh, Greg and Michael had arranged to find people to comment, to respond to the tweets throughout the day. Greg planned at, you know, 12, 15 a.m., because that's when Greg is usually up. He started the process. So that's when it started. And things flowed. And everybody tried to use their own voice. So Michael is trying to say, don't mistake technical decision for philosophical saying, no, really, we thought about this. We really did think through on the PMC level. And that's a, that's a very realistic thing for him to say, even if it was a, you know, apparently bad idea.
I think that, that says enough, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, so for those who aren't, aren't laughing, Inception is a movie where people can transmit memories to your brain and change like the world suddenly goes like this. So this is an important community point that um, there is still reason to keep developing if there is still a community there. So, <laughs> so this is the point where people, people might have been saying to themselves, wow, oh my god, this might be serious, because the, the Jira queue kept changing. So people would come in and say, what were you doing? No, we really had a vote, here it is, which was a private archive, so people couldn't validate that. The infra contractors and, and other members come in and say, yeah, I think it's stupid, but I've already got half the stuff imported, here's the link. <laughs> so, you know, there was realistic stuff in there. Um, but this was the point where anybody who, you know, really knows the personalities knew, no. This is absolutely not what Rich could ever say. Rich is one of the nicest people out there, and even when he disagrees with you and knows that, oh my God, you have had the stupidest idea in the world, he will make it seem like you had a great idea and changed your mind. This was uh, one of Jim's contributions, reminding us that the PMC is not the complete community and that we have to bring in the whole community, everyone on the user list, everyone on the dev list, in fact, everyone on Twitter needs to be in on these discussions. You can't just make it up in private. Uh, and so this is just the obvious one, and this was, a, this was a realistic portrayal because Jim and Greg certainly, you know, are passionate and sometimes really get into it, especially with people they know. So these were completely realistic, um, and, you know, we had as noted board members and you know a few long-term members uh, one of whom got an email privately from someone saying hey is this really happening today and the person was like oh my god I need to figure out what to say to this person yeah uh, I better go check so it was very very well done okay um, it obviously made a lot of tech news and this is why combinator there's one bit that I want to mention from this Apache internal politics of that's not how we did it in the 90s. <laughs> that is apparently how the world sees us and our policies. And the, uh, the final line here, I think, is the key bit. <laughs> so uh, uh, the only other point is, so a community is active as long as there are three PMC members who show up and could make a release if they needed to. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a hot project, it doesn't matter if it's the next cool thing, or even if you think it's kind of neat. If there's still somebody who cares about it and will help, we are happy to host any project that wants to be an Apache project. But we do have to be aware of how the world sees us, and maybe our website that dates from the 90s as well is not helping. <laughs> so please, when I submit my budget request, Please vote yes. Thank you. Who do we have left? OK, we have time for. We've done, oh, no, we have not we have done, done that one. So, so we have time for, for, for two more. Oh, and we have three. No, no he, he did not going to do it. No? No. OK. So, um, OK, you want to call up Suresh? All right. All right, so this is, this is a question that has puzzled me for a while, so if we can come up with an answer to this, I'll be impressed. Uh, Suresh Manu is uh, coming up, or is this Maru or? Maru, yeah. Maru. okay. I'm, I'm blaming your handwriting for that. Yeah. All right, <laughs> and he wants to know, what is wrong with you all? Tell us. Yeah, I want to know the answer, like, and I want to, don't want to repeat the question, like seriously, what is wrong with you all? Any guesses what I'm trying to ask or why? We like beer. <laughs> I don't see anything wrong in that. Yeah. You don't like contributors. That's what I really see. Like, you know, I, 
what I'm really referring to is like, you know, not many projects, like, and I'll, I'll keep, may give a couple of quotes. Like, you know, we have a wine disco here giving us free beer. We have a company giving us free contributors and contributors, and we are not welcoming them. Any guesses? What's that? Google Summer of Code. And how many projects we've been like you know, averaging in the last three years or so? Like, you know, just like Apache has been participating in the Google Summer of Code right from year one, uh, when the Google pro the program started in 2005. And we have an average of around 40 projects per year. And how many PMCs we have? I don't know, how, many, how much, how, what's the right number change when you last counted? 149. 149. And we have 40 projects only wanting to get new contributors. When we have an opportunity like, you know, for getting a new contributor for full time for the summer, who can potentially become a contributor and so on. And just not that, I think I would have asked Nick to give a quote, but Nick and Ross and others were like, you know, doing a one more program with a collaboration with an Indian open source group, like an international, I forget the exact acronym, but an open source international center for open source foundation, right? Nick? Yeah. Anyway, that was another same thing. Like, you know, I think I've, I've been pretty disappointed there too. So I just want to know seriously, like, you know, why, like, you know, we have, like, you know, two or three talks saying about we want new committers, come and help that. But, you know, we have an opportunity. I think, like, you know, we have 40 against 149 projects we have. So that's way less than, like, you know, one in three projects is taking advantage of that. I think, like, you know, you can do better than that, much better than that. And, more, and the other surprising factor is, Whenever you leave, and previously Norin and Ross and who all administered the program resonate this with it, whenever we go back to Google, here is the number of slots we want. They give us much more than what we asked. That's very unusual to all the other foundations, like, you know, who ask, like, and who get a fraction of what they ask for. So here is, like, you know, Google and others, like, you know, looking at as, here is a premier open source organization. Let all the students learn, like, open source from this, and we are not taking advantage of that. We are late for this year already, but at least I'll hope like, you know, you guys can do much better next year. So some tips, like, you know, what we can do. So one is, like, when we see from the student side, actually, we had a student, like, you know, guest speaker in one of my uh, GSOC talk here. He was coming up and saying, like, you know, students would like to sleep no more than four hours. You want to contribute. <laughs> of course, I don't understand why they don't want to, but I don't think so, not uh, in drinking beer in their dorm rooms, but they want to hack around and they don't find the opportunities. They come and look at the Apache projects, they get overwhelmed, like, no, they feel not welcoming. They don't find starter tasks, they don't find like, you know, yeah, you all say get involved, fix bugs, write documentation, but help us get started. We are ready to like, you know, put our time like, you know, just beyond it because we know we can make careers through this and so on, but we need a little help. Just give us, like, you know, give us a hand to get on board, and then we'll go from there. So I think, like, you know, it's time, like, you know, for all of us to think and welcome this opportunity. And also, like, you know, I think, like, even many of us have day jobs, and we constantly try to find good recruiting. And even that's a good channel, actually, beyond our foundation things here. If we get a good student, like, you know, here, like, you know, get them on board. Like, so that's a good opportunity. So you might just complain lack of time. Like, you know, we are, like, four or five committers in a small project. How can we use mentoring? There are a lot more advantages, direct and indirect. So let's get started much earlier for next year. Do some prep work, create some starter tasks, propose more and more projects, and also that increases the quality. Like right now, we are almost like the number of projects we get, uh, request, like is the number of projects we get. So that's not so good. Like no, we, we don't have a way. The only way to have better quality students is when we have a better sample to pick from. Right now, we don't. So. All in all, like, I encourage you all to take advantage of it, like, at least next year, like, you know, when, when Google is generously paying, like, $6,000 per student, let's use that time, and then, like, you know, also increase our project's documentation and so on, and use that. So, no further complaints. We don't have contributors. You, it's our fault. That's all. Okay, we are running just a little bit late. Is anyone opposed to us continuing on for just three more small sessions? Is that okay? Is that, are we good with doing that? Okay, fantastic, okay. All right. So let's do that. Uh, uh, next, I'd like to ask uh, uh, Ian Clellum. Ian, did you walk in? No, oh, okay. He's gonna talk about Cordova uh, continuous integration. 
No? Okay. Timer's running. You did submit it, right? <laughs> you did, okay. Yeah, he knows you about that. Okay. And go. There we go. Okay, so yeah, I want to talk about the, uh, the awesomely insane Cordova continuous integration system. Um, there we are. So I work at Google on Cordova. I've been doing this for about a year. When I started, we were at Cordova 2.5. I think it had just been released. And back then, the only way to test Cordova was to use the mobile spec application, which you had to uh, you had to check out, you had to compile it, you got to build it, you got to put it on your own little personal device, and you got to run through all the tests. And I think back then, running through all the tests meant that there were about five to maybe 15 tests that wouldn't pass, uh, depending on your operating system, depending on your platform, your device, external servers, maybe the phase of the moon. Um, and, sorry. You know, and committers just knew about that. And as a new committer, you had to get used to it, and it just sucked. <laughs> and this is when there was only two repositories involved in a particular build. I think two months later, we switched to the Cordova 3 new shiny plugin architecture, uh, which meant that every plugin was in its own Git repo. Uh, we now have 49 Git repositories. Thank you, Infra. Um, but it means that there's like 24 repositories involved in any single build. Uh, we needed a CI server, and we needed it pretty bad. Uh, lucky for us, Adobe had uh, already built one. Filmi had a uh, medic project that was, uh, that was built and running. Unfortunately, it hadn't actually run successfully in months and could not use the new plugin system. So our team, uh, David Kemp, he took this, took it apart, spent months integrating this into BuildBot and making something useful out of it um, and came up with something that actually worked, although it's a little bit insane. Um, I've only got like three minutes, so I can only talk about a couple of the insane things. Um, first off is that networks are tricky and devices are kind of finicky. They're connected to a build slave over a little cable, which you can push code out on, but they can't actually use it to talk over a network, um, which sucks. For security reasons, we also couldn't even have them on the same network as our build master or our build slave. <laughs> so we ended up having to take some of the medic code and build a custom plugin where the devices, after going through all the tests, they push out their results to a CouchDB server in the cloud, which we then wait for. Um, also, our build master couldn't talk to the public world because it was living in our, our own uh, office, so we ended up having to get that hosted remotely in the cloud and talking, um, talking over the internet to our slave. We ended up with a master-slave server um, yeah, master slave build setup set up where the slave is running Mac OS and is connected to the devices physically. Um, and the build master is a Linux machine in the cloud. Uh, the other crazy thing, let's see. Yeah, so we've got 30 repositories. Uh, and BuildBot needs to be able to identify things. So how do we keep track of that? We ended up using a hash of hashes to identify individual builds, which is good. It's unique. Um, any particular change to any repository changes um, you know, changes the hash, that's guaranteed. It also sucks because you can't reverse it. We cannot get BuildBot to build something based on a hash. You can't go back and say, well, what hash has made up this hash? It's just easier to build the entire tree from scratch um, based on whatever present at the time. Um, so what does BuildBot actually do? It watches repositories. It watches like 25 to 30 repositories for changes. Whenever it sees a change, it uses our Coho tool, which it checks out of Git to download all of the other things out of Git. It switches them to the appropriate branches, um, which could be master, could be dev, could be something else, only medic knows for sure. Um, it installs CLI and Plugman from Git and then uses NPM. It builds the project. It compiles all the JavaScript uh, using Grunt. It creates a project, adds the platform, adds the plugins, adds the mobile spec, which it then Let's see, it sim links, and then it monkey patches it to know its own build uh, hash. It builds the app, deploys it to the device, which works most of the time, uh, and then it sits back and waits for CouchDB. Um, and it's great. Our tests are green all the time. Well, okay, some of the time. It catches failures pretty quickly, um, and we've got a lot more confidence in our releases. Um, let's see, 30 seconds. Um, what do we need? We need some more people to undertake this and get some more build machines. I think IBM has one, Microsoft has one, but we'd really like some more people to, uh, to do this and get us more devices and more tests and give us some more confidence. 
No countdown? <laughs> Fine, I'm done. Four, three, <laughs> two, one. <laughs> Okay, we, um, we only have time for another three minutes or so. So um, if, you, if you can, please stay for the next three minutes. Um, they, they will be very, very uh, useful. Um, uh, uh, I'm going to leave. Uh, um, Joe wants to talk about stuff, so we're going to uh, open it up to him, and then we'll close off with a little video tribute. I won't do the, um, the countdown timer, but uh, please stick around. Okay. So, uh, I'm gonna try to take 90 seconds of your time and that's it. So everybody knows here that I work for Red Hat. Um, today we launched softwarecollections.org, which was one of the most unfortunately named projects, but extremely useful, especially I think to a lot of Apache projects. Uh, what Software Collections is, is basically a way to package uh, system libraries or things like Python, different versions, for uh, Red Hat, CentOS, or Fedora and allow you to run a non-system version in conjunction with the system version. So you don't break things horribly to run a different version of Python or Perl or MySQL or something like that. So I would encourage any of you who ship software like say CloudStack that needs a different library version to look into these, to look into softwarecollections.org and see about using that to package any dependencies you might need to more easily support your users on those platforms. Okay, that was my one plug and I wanna give one other quick plug. If you are involved in any of the upstream Apache projects and would like to uh, get attention to them, I do a podcast for Red Hat called Upstream and I would love to sit down with any of you who, uh, are reasonably articulate and would like to talk about your project and what you do. Uh, the fewer ums and hum mm, mm, uh, things I have to edit out, the better. But uh, those are my two things and I'm gonna turn over the rest of the time to Jim. Thanks, folks. Thank you, Joe. Okay, we are now closing off. I'd like to once again uh, uh, thank Wendisco for, uh, for, for sponsoring the event. Yes, come on, okay. Okay, there is this really, really cheesy video. Oh man, it's really hard to see that. I can't, can't quite expand it. But anyway, uh, can I see it right there? I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger. Uh, yeah, that's good enough. Okay, um, I don't know how many people have actually seen this, but you are in for a treat. And people have asked us continually, I do. Yeah, I was just going to use this. Okay. So um, it's a really cheesy video, and if you've seen it, or even if you haven't seen it, people have asked us continually whether or not this is our, uh, uh, our, our uh, theme song. And, and the name of the song is Apache, so this is, you know, the reason why people think that, okay? Um, and unfortunately, the answer is no, that is not our official theme song. Actually, to be honest with you, this is our official theme song. redo that one, okay? Anybody mind if we redo that? Again. Yeah, for sure. So in case you don't know, the faces are people who are really, really involved uh, within the ASF. 
You see Roy, you see Greg, you see Rich, you see Bertrand. Look at the time. Roy's having a great time, isn't he? Look at that smile on his face. And doesn't that look exactly like how Rich would play the bongos? Now here comes our cheerleader. Yay! There's Norrin. And finally we have Brett, who's our chairman. So that is our official theme song. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, else for, for, for attending. Um, everyone who, was, uh, who uh, did do a, a, a lightning talk, thank you very, very much. If we didn't get to yours, I apologize. One of the rare years that we had actually more talks that we could actually go through. So thank you again. Thank you to Wendisco. Enjoy tomorrow. Enjoy tonight. Um, and have fun. <laughs>